Hello everyone and welcome to Sorted Food. Now, thanks to your amazing suggestions on a recent community tab post, we have a sterling lineup of potentially pretentious ingredients for our normals to play with. Yes, we want Barry and Jamie to taste, test and articulate their thoughts for you guys at home. Are you ready, boys? Yes, please, bring it on. Lift the cloche. Oh. Mm. Oh. Lado. <laughs> oh. I know what that is. Oh no. Oh, I know what that is. What is that? I need to double check. <laughs> <laughs> Such confidence at first. It's um, horseradish. No, it's mustard. So these are mustard balls from Chewksbury Mustard. A mustard ball is the only true Chewksbury mustard popular from the 16th to 19th century only sold in this form, never in jars or containers. Mustard balls traditionally were dried naturally to aid preservation to help with transportation. This is cool. This is a slice of history. So thank you to Dan Beal Cox who suggested that we review mustard balls. What do you think? Whoa. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, but it goes a long way, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Lucky we're not playing poker face. Woo! <laughs> oh, no, it's really good. It's, um... <laughs> <laughs> it's... I thought Mr. Oh, I love wasabi. I can deal with this. He's having a shocker. It is the wasabi horseradish thing, but it's... It's, it's more burny. It's sweeter than um, normal horseradish wasabi. <laughs> <laughs> I really like it. So... <laughs> <laughs> the mustard is pounded and combined in this instance with horseradish, you are correct, and a bit of cider. But back in the day, pounded mustard, roll it into balls, and then you'd rehydrate the mustard when you wanted to use it. Like a oh, stock cube. Right, okay, so that's why it's more intense. Yeah. It's like a traveling stock cube. So that one there has come up to room temperature, so it's like, it's a bit pasty and malleable. Mm. We've stuck one in the freezer because another recommended use of it is to shave it over food. Well, while we're on the subject of food, do you want to eat some? Mm. Yes, why do you think I'm here? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that coming over? What's it? Sandwiches. They're sandwiches. So guys, you have a, a, a posh ham sandwich. Glazed ham, aioli, loads of salad, cheddar. Open it up, get some mustard in there, and uh, give it a whirl. Oh. oh, this looks amazing. So a couple of methods here. Jamie's going for the grating method. Baz is rehydrating the mustard ball with some water. Now, back in the day, in the 16th century, when these were used, you couldn't rely on the water not giving you some sort of poisoning. So they used to actually <laughs> dilute this with alcohol. Oh, that's a good sandwich. Cheers. Great. Great sandwich. I am fascinated. Not what I expected. It's more um, familiar to a wasabi. It hasn't the flavour of mustard. It has the aroma of mustard, but the flavour of horseradish. Mm. Interesting. It's very much, it's very much more horseradishy mm. than it is mustardy. So I know what you're thinking. Why is this in a pretentious ingredients episode? Mm. Oh, it's well, my mind. Um, we thought, cool, wouldn't this be a fantastic opportunity to give a nod back to history, but discuss now in real life whether this has a purpose and whether if Barry brought this to the table. Um, while you're around his for some dinner, you would think that he's being pretentious or not. It feels to me like it's just that things have moved on and that we don't need mustard balls. Mm -hmm. I like how you could do some really different things with that. This excited me most because of the historical problems and the fact that Tewksbury are preserving something that would otherwise be lost. Knowing about it is 90% of the way there. But I don't know if I would actually have a ball at home. Because mm. actually, a big jar of good mustard would work, but I love the fact that somebody is looking after this tradition mm. that has been around since 16th century. Okay, let's talk about price. Um, how much do you think a 40 gram ball, one of those, costs? Two pound. Four pounds. Six pounds, 99p. Okay. That's the kind of money that I'd go, do you know what, I'll give that a try. Sorry, I'd, 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 I'd do that. Jar. I really would rather, I'd rather a, a jar for a couple of quid. Pretentious or not? It is not pretentious. Not pretentious. Okay, boys, lift the cloche. Why are you dis? Why, why? Why have you turned your nose up at that? Just on pure well, honestly, honestly, honestly. You snobs. Looks looks like duck. Does look like duck. <laughs> I will. I will concur. Well, if we put it in a cork top jar with rose gold lettering, you'd buy it up for forty nine pounds, wouldn't you? You would. 
you told it it would like exfoliate your forehead, you'd be, <laughs> yeah. it'd be spreading it all over that forehead. <laughs> on smell alone, I'm going to go three, two, one. I'd like you both to say out loud what oh. you think this is. Okay. 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 Three, two, one. Licorice. Demerara sugar. Wow. Interesting. This is amazing. Okay, give it a taste. I didn't expect it to be jelly-like in texture. Any that. He's, he's, that is a dark sugar. So Barry's getting like a molasses almost sweetness yeah. coming through. And Jamie's getting li licorice, like aniseed -y kind of. Less aniseed when you eat it. It is less aniseed when you eat it. It's far more like molasses. Boys, you are eating black garlic paste. Black garlic is essentially white garlic that's been left in a humid environment to slowly warm up. This recommendation came from Georgia and PG, so thank you very much. Boys, what do you think? It's really interesting, but it's not like garlic. Well, as you cook any onion, leek, garlic, anything of that family, it gets rid of all that kind of onion sulfury kind of flavour and mellows right down. That paste is a very different sort of flavour, but you can use it as a paste, literally spread on toast. Now you've tried the paste and nibbled on a clove, would you like to try it in situ? Yes. Nice. You have some courgette fries. So they're tossed in polenta and parmesan, they're baked, and that is what you're going to dip into your black garlic aioli, which we've also added in a little bit of black tahini in there as well, just to keep with that shocking wow factor of the, the black dip. I love an aioli. It feels more like a it's Nutella. Ch it's, it's chocolate spready. Cheers. Cheers. Boop. I mean, I think you guys have done phenomenally well with guessing the tastes because according to the website of this particular product, once aged, black garlic is totally different to raw garlic, offering up a much more mellow taste, but with huge complexity and depth, similar to tasting notes of molasses, balsamic, tamarind, caramel, dates, and much more. So I'd say that they got that pretty bang on. It takes longer to deliver on the garlic flavor. I don't like it very much. Okay. In that situation as a dipping sauce. For me, it's not savoury enough. Interesting. It, like These fries are delicious. Mm. They're light, they're delicate, it's overpowering. No, they're based on a Pax recipe. Oh, are they? Straight out of yeah. oh, okay. yeah. Really simple, because you just whack them on a tray, parmesan polenta, and they crisp up in the oven. Really awesome midweek hack. It's a pretty good thing that we still be like them then. Plug, plug, plug. I think what's interesting is it has been available in the industry, but it's more difficult to find it in retail in the UK pretty much until now. But application and explaining where to use it is quite a difficult process. So the garlic bulb, how much do you think that cost us? Four pounds. Okay. I was gonna say three pounds. Jamie Spafford, you are correct, two pounds 99. Um, the garlic paste for 100 grams was four pounds 99. Price wise, justified because of the process is quite unique. Um, before trying it, I always, and understanding what it was, I presumed it was pretentious because I thought it was a, a different breed of garlic mm. and therefore they could put a massive price tag on it. Shall we? Yeah, but now I know there's a process behind it to bring a whole different complexity to the flavour, I can kind of justify it and it becomes less pretentious. Knowing what to do with it and make the most of it is a barrier. In that case, black garlic, pretentious or not? It's not pretentious. Not pretentious. Next one, lift the cloche. Ooh. Mm. Okay, that is... Like dehydrated, could Ooh. be walnuts, could be mushrooms. It doesn't smell very nice. It's a bit cheesy. Yes, yeah, it's, bit, mm. bit, bit, it's gone off a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, they look like really weird mushrooms. They say, oh! No. Okay, I've got somewhere. Where? I'm going to go for this, and I think it might be somewhere close. It's not coral. Interesting. Not anywhere close, but Damn. interesting. Because it's it's because it smells a, it smells a little bit like fish food, and it looks like it could have grown underwater. They are morel mushrooms. After all that, they're just mushrooms. Not morel. just mushrooms. Sorry. So these are wild morel mushrooms, uh, or morcella highly prized woodland variety. And this idea for a potential ingredient came from Markman278. Thank you. So morel mushrooms, ever heard of them? No. No. No? 
So the thing with morels is there is quite a short season and therefore if you want to enjoy them for the rest of the year, drying them is a pretty good way of doing that. Simply rehydrate them in boiling water and then you can use them in all sorts of things and the liquid you end up with, you can use too. Where are they from? A lot of them are grown sort of over Europe, so they're not easy, they're not farmed. So that is where their attraction comes from, is the, the mystique of being able to get hold of them. We still don't really know how they grow, where they grow, or why they grow, and therefore they're really difficult to find, and therefore are quite special when you do. Oh. 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 Pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> Basically a mushroom fricassee on a bed of polenta with some mm, bacon, fricassee. cooked out with masala and cream. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's special. That's a really meaty mushroom. Really meaty mushroom. Really a proper umams. That is delicious. Obviously fresh is a different product. You'd use it in a different way and there's so many things you can do. It just sauteed in butter and put over, again, polenta. But these dehydrated also give you the option of the stock has a lot of that mm. flavour. They're better than what I expected. Good. In flavour, spectacular. Mm. Just because something's rare doesn't make it pretentious. Uh, no, but the fact they had to explain why they're special mm. to help market it to you, to kind of go, you know what, these are worth spending the money on because they're rare. A bit like a mustard ball and black garlic. It's about, you have to explain the education because it's less normal. Have I got the skills to make the most of that ingredient or am I being sold to because this is the rarest mushroom you will mm. ever lay your eyes on. Mm. Yeah, to, make, to, to convince us in buying it, the marketing would have to be quite extreme and therefore push it into a pretentious Ooh. kind of bracket. Yeah. But you, as chefs, you don't have to be sold to. You know about it. I'm kind of with you. Like, mm. I think maybe I'm pretentious in my quest for what I want these to achieve instead of the ingredient themselves being pretentious. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So there we go, for a tub that size, 30 grams. How much? Did you see that? No, no one that. saw that. Are we right. rolling? Damn. <laughs> Eight pounds. Oh, I had 10 pounds. Did you? Yeah, in my head. Add them together, 18 pounds 50 for 30 grams. That's quite a lot of money. Okay then, pretentious or not? It, it reminds me more of truffles. And truffles... You've got to buy a dog and everything. When you think of them, you think pretentious. Really? Yeah. But when you really think about them, you go, actually they're not. This is taking on the same journey. £18.50 is a lot of money. That doesn't make it pretentious. Potentially pretentious ingredient number four. Lift the cloche. <gasps> purple salt. Purple salt. It's purple salt. Is it? Give it a taste. Uh, Why is it eggy? It's eggy, yeah. Uh, it's they're, they're gone off fast. any salt at all. Yeah. It's salty. It's a seasoned, well seasoned egg sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what you have is Korean purple bamboo salt prepared by packing bay salt, or essentially sea salt, into bamboo, sealing it with nutrient rich clay, and then baking it in an oven very, very high temperatures, and the temperatures get higher and higher, and you cool it and bake it, cool it and bake it nine times. Basically, it gets all those flavors from the bamboo that it's packed in. So it kind of concentrates the minerally elements of salt, removes any of the other toxins, and what you're left with is like the purest form. It can be any color, red, white, blue, there's different stages. The most premium that goes up to 1700 degrees Celsius, liquid salt, once it cools, it's purple. Wow. Mm. I find these kind of processes so interesting because somebody at some point thought, let's shove that in some bamboo and heat it up and see what it's like. And they go nine times and then somebody must have done it 10 times and gone, whoa, no, no, just nine. <laughs> <laughs> interesting you say that because it's been used for centuries in Korean herbal medicine and they do it, did it once or twice. It was a Korean herbalist just over a hundred years ago that kind of fine-tuned this nine-stage process, and it takes so long. That final one that goes to so, so hot, takes two days to cool. Wow. Before they can even use it. That's how hot it gets. Would you like to try it on something? Mm. Yeah. Big sandwich? Wow. Flipping egg. It's simple. Throw it yeah, it's sure, sure it is. 
tuna tartare, but also with some pickled radish, some pak choy, um, some coriander oil, a little bit of sriracha. More importantly, we want you to take the salt, grind some up and season it to taste. And maybe one of you could do regular sea salt. It's often added to foods and drinks, teas, smoothies, cold drinks, hot drinks, but also soups and broths and stews. Um, and we thought this was a nice way of celebrating it in a fairly raw form. Let's try um, Essex salt first. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. That is delicious. Mm. That mm. is really good. Tough to beat. And this is the purple salt. The egg has been mellowed. There's a more rounded flavour wow. to the tuna that isn't salty. Yeah, it's, it, it's less harsh. <laughs> Obviously, we're not health professionals, but beyond its taste, it also has lots of claims around the added benefits with nutrition and health in mind. Rich in antioxidants, it removes a lot of the toxicity when you heat it. So if we think about, at the moment, microplastics in our sea, mm -hmm. if you're heating it to 1,700 degrees Celsius, you're getting rid of all microplastics. It also comes with the caveat that the WHO in 2016 released a report that said, whilst there's nothing in it harmful that's gonna cause any problems, they haven't yet proven whether there's any benefits either. All still pending, not enough science. Which one do you prefer, A or B? B, I think is far more interesting because it's, it's more unusual. It's making me question more what I'm eating because it, it's taking me to different places. I like them equally. I, I wouldn't choose one or the other, I don't think. Okay, so let's have a guess at price oh. from you. Oh. As a comparison, Malden sea salt, roughly the same weight, £1.99. Huh. How much for that? Should we make it interesting? How about the person closest to the price gets to take home all the pretentious ingredients? Um, make it fair, same time. Yep. Three, two, one. 25 pounds. Oh. Whoa! So for that pot of Korean purple bamboo salt, we paid 135 pounds and 60 pence. Money, money, <laughs> 10 money. times more expensive than Himalayan money. pink salt. 135 pounds worth of salt. And not my decision, it's thanks to Aruk and Cassandra and LV and Pan Sands. Lots of other people. They suggested we got some. Pretentious or not? I'm not paying for the health benefits. I'm not paying for the flavour. You're paying because of the process it's been through, which doesn't actually impact me at all. So for me to spend that money, it feels pretentious. The only application I can see this being useful in is in a Michelin star restaurant where they sprinkle a little bit on top and then they tell you that they've sprinkled a yeah. little bit on top and therefore it's pretentious. A Michelin star winning chef would also know why they're using it, and it would make a difference. Mm -hmm. Good day. That concludes another episode of Pretentious Ingredients. Yeah, massive thank you for all of you who contributed ideas and products for us to try. Please keep them coming. Yep, that's exactly what we want. More ideas for next time. Comment down below. Take the hassle out of your midweek cooking while saving money, reducing your food waste, and using chefy shortcuts to cook like a pro. Check out our five-star rated meal packs app for a whole month free. Link below. Have you been to the Isle of Wight Festival? Yes. Garlic Festival? Uh, not to the... <laughs> He's talking about the music festival, you're talking about the garlic festival. The Isle of Wight Garlic Festival is fantastic.